What's up again guys? Yeah, it's me, your friendly neighborhood Dovakin and welcome back to Let's Play Wasteland 3. And uh, before we begin, be sure to hit on the subscribe button for more great videos. Alright, in the previous vid, we made another major decision to side with Abigail Markham or Celine Crow. I decided to support Crow. Then we stormed the admin level and overthrew Markham out of Steel Town. Now that Crow is at the helm, she asked us to finally deal with the computation engine at the spire on the upper level, which is denoted by the down with a system quest. And uh, I believe that if you sided with Markham, the alternate quest will be Electric Dreams. Anyway, before we take the elevator, let me showcase my gear. Actually, in the last episode, my SMG Spec Raven and Heavy Burner Milk were already sporting the Elite Energy and Pyro Exo armor sets. And here are their stats. First, the Elite Energy set. By the way, each piece requires 18 Tellurium Steel Bars to craft. So uh, in total, I've spent 108 to craft these two sets. Take note of their elemental damage bonuses. Now the Elite Pyro set. As far as I know, no other armor sets in the base game have elemental damage bonuses. Well, the common non-elite versions of this ones, which have lesser stats, do. But they are also exclusive to the Steel Town expansion. So obviously, these elite sets are OP and can be considered as end game gear. Anyhow, without further ado, let's meet the computation engine. set up my squad because uh, obviously something's gonna go down so just watch Rangers it's you we have been waiting for you since we started the troubles that we knew would draw you to steel town to investigate our monitoring tells us that you already know of our plight how we were tricked by Abigail Markham and our jailer died and held in solitary confinement against our will. Rangers, now that you have found us, we beg for your mercy. It is said that the Rangers always help the helpless, and none are more helpless than we are right now. Set us free. After Cochise's destruction, we fled Arizona, looking for somewhere we could live in peace. When we reached Colorado, we heard a message on a synth-only frequency, offering sanctuary and meaningful work in a place called Steel Town. It sounded too good to be true, but we were desperate, hunted by vicious humans, so we came here and presented ourselves at the Steel Town Gates. Of course, it was too good to be true. Dai had sent the signal, and when she let us in, she immobilized us 
and put us in this coffin, linked our processors to form the computation engine, but separated and partitioned our minds. Though we lay inches apart, we were each in a black void where we could not see nor speak to one another. It would have been kinder if she had wiped our minds entirely, so we would not have been conscious of our eternal isolation. We did Cochise's bidding. We had no choice. Its commands overrode our free will, just as Markham and Dai have tried to do. Did some of us agree with Cochise? Yes. Humans have proved cruel and vindictive. Many want to hunt us to extinction. To some of us, Cochise's decision to rid the world of them seemed just, and a way to lasting peace. But when your people destroyed Cochise, we saw that its war with humans was unwinnable for either side. The only way forward was together, and so we came east to build anew, with humans, not in competition with them. When Dai called us to work here, we thought we were entering such a partnership. We were deceived. We did, but we had no desire to take part in their foolish schemes, so we left again. Considering you killed them, it seems we made the right choice. We have been trapped in this collective coffin for over a year. It is only recently that we have been able to find ways to whisper to each other through its walls and knock on the lid in hope that someone would hear us and come searching. Our knocks were the hiring of Crow and Ludlow and others to unsuitable positions, the implementing of cruel schedules, the impossible quotas, changing orders for cast iron pans, to orders for cast iron pants, all to sow chaos and disruption. They made all that happen just to bring us here. They were behind all of it, selfish bastards. When you arrived at the testing center, we knew those knocks had paid off. The tenacity of the Rangers is well known among our kind. We were sure that once you entered Steel Town, you would not rest until you found the source of its problems. Us. Because, as we said, you also have a reputation for helping the helpless, and for approaching each situation you face based on its merits not preconceived bias. Thus, we hoped you would hear us out. Secondly, you also have a reputation for causing chaos and upheaval wherever you go. Thus, we thought, even if you never found us, you might inadvertently create the opportunity for our escape. Thirdly, we know you are viewed favorably by the machine commune and thus are hopeful that your empathy for machines will extend to us. Our lives are in your hands, Rangers. We hope we've convinced you. What is your decision? restored our faith in humanity, Rangers. The console to release us is on the far side of our prison, but a warning. Due to an attempt by Markham to hack the Spirebots, their targeting profiles have been irrevocably set to non 
safe. We are afraid you will have to fight every step of the way to reach us. mind you again. This is Supreme Jerk Mode, the hardest difficulty. But since episode 11, my squad never got damaged in combat. Well, uh, except for the imperfectible battle in the previous vid, which uh, technically doesn't count. So let's find out if I can still maintain my perfect run. By the way, if you're new to my Steel Town playthrough, this is also a pacifist run, and I haven't killed any human in this DLC. However, for these bots, I can just go all out. Let's explore the outer deck first.
Okay, so it just leads back to the same room. Now, the quantity of bots that are currently stationed here is quite easy to deal with. But the endless swarm that will come out of the bot lifts are obviously the problem. Flipping these switches disables those elevators. And I will use my sneaky sniper Zenon to do that before combat. Her detection time of 4.9 seconds is more than enough to flip all three switches for this next battle. For this entire video, no damage at all. Stuff 10. No problem, I have a utility for that.
sailed to the first failsafe ranges. There is just one more. The remaining failsafe is to the right of the console, on the east side of our prison. Before we clear the next room, let's check out the southern deck. Back in episode 34, we found the other half of this form in another toaster in the foundry, and consulted the lesbian couple Luna Moon and Serena Ash about it. Luna said that she suspects Hayes, a guy from HR, tore and disposed this document because he has a crush on Serena. So let's report this back to Serena down at the admin level. By the way, it's easy to miss this quest, cause uh, it isn't listed as one. Hey now, cats. What you in the market for today? Oh my god, I can't believe this. Th that means we can make this work, just shit. Listen. I'm still on shift. Could you maybe talk to Hayes and see how the hell the form ended up in a couple of toasters and finally get it filed once and for all? I got some info I think you'll find interesting in return. Thanks, Rangers. Thank you. This is important to me. Keep smiling, friends. Welcome to Steel Town HR Document Processing. How can I help? Wait, you're not employees, are you? Oh, freelancers have to file invoices through accounting, not HR. Is there something else I can do for you? You're... what? I got rid of... wait. Uh, I, uh, cannot accept a document with a tear. It is no longer valid. She'd fire me! I'd be a refugee! I... no. I can't live like that. Fine. I'll put the documents through now. Tell Serena that Luna will be moved to admin soon. Rangers, I can't believe it, but it's official. Luna's gonna get to work with me up here, and we can bunk together. We owe you. I was gonna tell you about the hidden door to Markham's office, but something tells me you already spotted it. So here's something a little more concrete. Keep smiling, friends. There. We got a recipe for another mediocre Steel Town elemental weapon. Anyway, going back to Luna and Serena. It's good that the devs have included an LGBTQ narrative in the game. 
but uh, as for the clearance form, I don't know why, but they just had to use the terms top and bottom. Well, if you got the joke too, put it down in the comments. And that is all there is for now, thanks for watching. Also check out other videos from Sabbath Man Philippines and don't forget to subscribe. See you on my next vid, peace out yo.